Hey friends, and thank you for tuning in to mrchoy.com.au. Today we are talking about how to appraise a property, how to price a house when you're at a listing presentation. Uh, the most effective way to uh, translate your information to uh, make sure that the vendor is understanding of, of why you're pricing a house the way that you price it, to ensure that you still get the listing when you price it realistically, and uh, to show the client how it's in their best interest to do certain things. So here we go, ready? Okay, so I've done the 10, 10 steps, okay, uh, to appraise a property, and here they all are, and then I've got some uh, a few freebies in there for you as well. Okay, so in rapport building, so this is before you talk about pricing, it depends on how you do your listed mount and what you do, do you, do you uh, sit down first before you do the inspection, inspect the house, then sit down, it's up to you how you want to do it, but what we actually do is um, our team, we sit down on the table first before we have an inspection and we build up rapport. And bef while we're building up the rapport, we ask a certain questions as well. And one of the questions is, um, so we might say, uh, uh, what's game plan? Where are you thinking about moving to? They might say they're thinking about moving to Xville. And we say, okay, is, a particular price, um, is there a particular price that you needed to get into Xville? And they might say X, okay? And so that's just a, that's that's something that you need to write down because that you'll be able to uh, remember that later on, and that can help uh, you come to a price of not so much of what the house is worth, but just to be able to, when you're translating information to the client, to just to keep that in the back of the mind so that you do it in the most appropriate fashion, okay? We also have a questionnaire, so we have like the top ten questions or something to ask a, a, a client, and so that's in our pre-listing pack before we go to the house and the client tick box is that, and one of the questions is how much do you think your house is worth? So, is there a price that you need to get you to Xville? Actually, that's that one, yeah. Is there a, pro is there a figure you need to get you to Xville? Okay, so keep that in the back of your mind. The questionnaire, they might fill out a price there. I would say about 10 to 20% of the clients fill out that. So that's gold. What is that price? What is that price is actually, um, so Mr. Ben, are you thinking about actual, are you thinking about putting the property up for sale? They might say, yeah, look, we're thinking about putting it up for sale if the price is right. Okay, and if the price is right, what, what will that enable you to do? It'll get me to it'll get me here and allow me to do this. Okay, what is that price that will allow you to do that? Okay, so that's what that is. So there's three ways that you can uh, understand uh, where the vendor sees their house worth uh, before you go into pricing. Do the do the inspection of the house. You come back, you sit sitting down, and we generally nut down price straight away because if we forget if we're completely out of price. There's no point doing a full listing presentation, so we do price first, okay? Um, is it okay with you that I don't pluck out a figure from the sky and that we use facts and figures and uh, information to appraise the, your house? Is that okay, Mr. Vendor? They say yes. So you just preframe in the fact that it's not so much you or, um, um, bringing up the price, you're using facts and figures to do that, okay? Then I talk about, we talk about the price pyramid, so this is what we call the price pyramid. So, Mr. Vendor, as you can see, the higher you go up in the price pyramid, the less people are willing to pay that price. So, you start at the bottom as a bargain price, then market price, and then a premium forward slash emotional price. If it's okay with you, we're not going to talk about the bargain price because there's no point hiring a real estate agent, uh, uh, working with a real estate agent to get your bargain price because you can do that yourself. And I'm also not going to talk about a premium price. I'm going to show you how we can get the premium price and the emotional price if it's out there in the marketplace. But what I prefer to talk about is what the market value of the property is, okay? And, and, and we'll use uh, the facts and figures, comparable sales, recent sales in the area to come to, to come to that market value. But don't worry, Mr. Vendor, we'll still talk about how to get that premium price if it's out there. So I don't so much promise a price, I promise a process. Okay, and so is that all, does this all make sense and is that all, all okay with you, Mr. Vendor? So that you get that okay. So that's the price pyramid, okay? How we come to a price after that is, Mr. Vendor, the way that we come to price is we look at all the recent sales in the air and then we compare it to yours. Is that okay with you, okay? What, when you do your, um, depending on what database you use to get all the sales information, and, um, but let's just say you've got your report, it's a 10 page report, uh, generally, they always have um, the median house price in there. Okay, so the median house price might be six hundred thousand. This house might be above or below, but it, it's got a graph and it shows the median house price for this time of the year and and throughout all the years. Okay, 
So what I like to do, or what we like to do, sit down with the vendor and go, Mr. Vendor, the median house price is, for example, 600,000. Do you think you're above or below a median house for the area? Okay? Then we go into the comparables. But when we go to comparables, a lot of agents I find just go straight to what a similar houses are to that house. What we like to do is do um, extreme compa- um not out what the house isn't to find out what it is. Not find out what is to find out what it is. To cross out what the house definitely isn't to find out what it is. So what we do is we talk about uh, houses that aren't um, as good as the house that we're in. So let's just say it's a four bedroom house. We'll go through recent sales of say three bedroom houses. Then it's say it's a four bedroom house and then we'll go into recent sales and, and say uh, look these are f- uh, five bedroom houses with extra living area and a swimming pool etc etc bigger land. So the client, the client says, oh yeah, yeah, but my house is better than those ones. And then you say to the client on these ones, do you think your house, will both property, properties were for sale at the same time at the same price, do you think, uh, which one do you think a buyer would buy? So is it fair to say that that's probably not the range that you're probably in? And then you go to the market ones. And what actually you're doing is you're guiding the client to what their price is and they come up with the price themselves as opposed to you. So they actually own the price through facts and figures and through that journey you take them through crossing out what the house isn't, not what it is first, okay? After you talk about the market one, what were you thinking? Just in case you haven't got the, any of the information here, what were you thinking? Okay, so so you say 600 to 650 for example. What were you thinking? Is that something that you were thinking? Is that around about what, what you had in mind as well, Mr. Vendor? Now, if they say yes, fine, move on, and, and, and then you can go on to the next thing, okay? You've ticked that box off in your listed mountain, and you can now move on. If they say, oh, look, uh, I was hoping to get, say, 700,000, you say, okay, Mr. Vendor, well, what we've done is we've looked at all, the, all of this, compared it for that, okay? If there's this a premium price, or emotional price, which could be that 700, because you know we've had we've had a house sell for a million dollars of a reserve. So we didn't market it, uh, say that it was worth that. We said it was worth around here, but we showed a process to get whatever was out there if it was there. And so then what we go, we talk about that 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 premium price and how we get it uh, through there. So that's that's your backup, so to speak, if they're not on the same page as you with price. From there we go into the pipeline. Pipeline is one of the first videos that I've done on mrchoy.com.au. If you go on the listing presentation or even on the search bar, just on the right hand side, um, just, just type in pipeline and you'll come up with a pipeline. And so that is how we use price in marketing, in, in absolutely everything. We use price through that buyer pipeline. This is probably the foundation of our listing presentation. Really, really important on pipeline, okay? Buyer pipeline. From there, so, okay, you've agreed on price. Once you've got the listing, okay, this is once you've got the listing, you can talk about the three indicators. The three indicators are to know whether or not we are right or wrong in price. So we always like to meet up with our clients after the first open for inspection to see whether and what kind of feedback we got from the market. So, no inspections, no offers. That generally means that the property is 10% or more above where it needs to be priced. Few inspections, no offers. The property is generally 5 to 10% above where it needs to be, and then multiple inspections, multiple offers, it's priced correctly to create competition and achieve that premium result that we talked about, Mr. Vendor. So after the first open for inspection, we're going to see how how we're going with all of this, and depending on which one it is, we'll get a very clear signal on, on whether or not we're right or wrong in terms of price. Guys, I hope you enjoyed. Take care. Cheers.